Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome back to our lesson as we started on Tuesday officially uh, to do mathematics and mathematical literacy. Uh, so today, as you can see, uh, we are again continuing with mathematics and we are doing analytical geometry. My name is Mlungisele Linjomeni, the Provincial Coordinator for Mathematics and Mathematical Literacy. Uh, today is the third day, as I indicated earlier. Right. Now, today we are going to do a lot of exercises. In fact, we are going to take a few question papers, maybe two question papers, and look at how then do you answer? But before that, I would like us to recap on what we did during the past two days, which is the 24th and the 25th of March 2020. So those who were not part or who did not watch or listen to the lessons, uh, I will just go through what we did so that you are able to see what is it that we did so that we are able to continue and join us. Right. The first thing that we said on Tuesday, we said in analytical geometry, you have to look at 10 things. Some of them you learn in grade 10 and 11. The only two that you learn in grade 12 is number 9 and number 10. So which means... The distance between two points is done in grade 10 and 11. Midpoint of a line segment is done in grade 10 and 11. Gradient of a line is done in grade 10 and 11. Angle of inclination is done in grade 10 and 11. Equation of a straight line is also done there in grade 10 and 11. Gradients of parallel lines, you also talk about parallel lines in grade uh, 11, especially, as well as perpendicular lines and collinear points. But if you note, I said, you must note with interest. You must be able to read and note what is it that is interesting. The interesting thing is that from number three, there is gradient. You calculate the gradient. Number four, you find the angle of inclination. And we said to find the angle of inclination is tan theta. That is, that angle is equal to M, and M stands for the gradient. Then number five, you find the equation of a line. And when you find the equation of a line, which, by the way, is in the form mx plus c, that m is the gradient. Number six, you talk about parallel lines. But what is it that is interesting in parallel lines? It is the fact that they have the same gradient. Number seven, you talk about perpendicular lines. But what is it that is interesting in perpendicular lines and makes us to want to talk about them. It is because when you multiply their gradients, you must get a negative one. So you still talk about the gradient. Number eight, you talk about collinear points. Now, what is it that interests us in collinear points? Once again, it is the fact that the gradients between collinear points is the same. So, which means you've got gradients. Then number nine, you talk of the equation of a circle. Now, that's the only part that you don't necessarily have to talk about the gradient. Then the last one, number 10, is the equation of a tangent. And I said a tangent is a straight line. A tangent is a straight line, which means it is in the form y is equal to mx plus c, and m is the I am emphasizing this issue about the gradient deliberately and also looking at the fact that we decided to start doing analytical geometry before we do calculus because in calculus we are going to link the gradient with the derivative. But for now we are talking about analytical geometry. So what it means, learners, is that in analytical geometry, gradient or slope is very important because you first calculate gradient you use gradient when calculating angle of inclination 
you use gradient when calculating equation of a straight line you use gradient when parallel lines are given you use gradient when perpendicular lines are given you use gradient when collinear points are, are, are there you use the gradient when the equation of a tangent is asked so the word gradient is going to dominate your question paper be it you are writing a controlled test uh, 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 June examinations or media examination, trial examination, and final because you find the word gradient one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven out of ten things require you to know the gradient or to be able to calculate the gradient. I decided to emphasize that point so that you are able to structure your study or your practice and make sure that you emphasize or you take time and do gradient. So those are the 10 things that uh, I mentioned on Monday, that I'm mean, sorry, on Tuesday, that we are going to talk about. And indeed, on Tuesday, we talked about the first eight. And then yesterday, we talked about the last two. Right. Now today, I want us to do a certain example first on how to find the equation of a tangent. Now, yesterday, we ran a little bit out of time having done only one example on how to find the equation of a tangent. And then I feel most of the learners may have uh, uh, struggled to get it or to understand how to find the equation of a tangent. Hence, I, I decided that let's rather spend f five minutes or less and talk about it equation of a tangent then after that we are going to do more problems from previous years question papers and see how do we then um, uh, use what we learned to solve analytical geometry problems now let's do this example about the equation of a tangent remember I am choosing at times, especially when I'm doing examples and I'm explaining concepts, I am choosing to draw using a free hand because I know those who, as you are viewing or as you are listening, you will be expected to draw using your free hand. So that is why from time to time I prefer to use a free hand. Now let's take that as a circle, right? Then if that is a circle, then we know that, that a line which will touch that circle at one point will be called a tangent. This will be called a circle and that will be called a tangent. Why is it called a tangent? It is simple because it touches the circle only at one point. It does not cut, it touches it because the moment it cuts, it means it is no longer a tangent, but a second. But here we are talking about the tangent. So if there is a center there, and if you draw a line from the center to the point of conduct, now this point is called point of conduct. Point of conduct. So if you draw a line from the center to the point of conduct, that line is called the radius. Remember, it is from the center to the circumference of the circle and you must know that that forms 90 degrees that is now part of your Euclidean geometry now remember Bakundi as I said analytical geometry is geometry after all so with me which means at the end of the day you have to apply some of the Euclidean geometry theorems so it is very important to note that we say a tangent is always perpendicular to a radius. A tangent is always perpendicular to a radius. And the moment you do that, it implies that the gradient of a tangent multiplied by gradient of a radius must give you a negative one. The gradient of a tangent multiplied by the gradient of a radius must give you negative one why is that the case it is simple because of what we said that 
the product of the gradients of perpendicular lines is negative 1 which means when you multiply two gradients that is the gradients of these lines the two lines are perpendicular to each other and you multiply those two gradients you must always get a negative 1 therefore if the tangent is perpendicular to a radius if the tangent is perpendicular to a radius therefore it means that when you multiply the gradient of a tangent and the gradient of a radius you must get a negative one because the two lines are perpendicular to each other so this is very important therefore which means now i'll just say as i said yesterday if you are having the gradient of a radius as negative 5 divided by 2 for argument's sake Therefore, you must know that the gradient of a tangent, if the one of a radius was negative, this one will be positive of a tangent. Then if it was 5 divided by 2, then the one for a tangent will be 2 divided by 5. In other words, the denominator becomes the numerator and the numerator becomes the denominator. So if you are having your gradient of a radius as 3, for argument's sake, positive 3, then you must recall that in mathematics, any number that is a standalone, it is divided by 1. So you must know that the denominator is always 1, but we don't write it. So which means the gradient of a radius is 3. What is the gradient of a tangent? The gradient of a tangent will be... This one was positive. We don't write positive. This one will be negative. This one was 3 over 1 this one will be 1 over 3 it is as simple as that that's basically how you find the gradient of a tangent using the gradient of a radius so you use the fact that in mathematics the, the radius is always perpendicular to a tangent or tangent is always perpendicular to a radius which means when you multiply the gradients of these two lines you must always get a negative 1 Let's just do now an example where you are given uh, anything, you are given it, let me rather uh, continue using my, 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 my red ink, right? Let's say you are given a Cartesian plane and they give you a circle uh, like that one and then you are given a tangent to that circle, a tangent to that circle, there is the point of contact and a sender somewhere. Let's say the sender is 1 and 2. And the point of contact there is point, let's say point R with coordinates um, 4 and negative 3, just for argument's sake. So you've got two points, sender with coordinates 1 and 2. And then you've got, um, you've got uh, point R with coordinates 4 and negative 3. Then the question is, determine the equation of a tangent. How do you find the equation of a tangent? Remember, you need to know that you are going to use y minus y1 is equal to m into x minus x1. Now, yesterday I emphasized the, the effect about variables in mathematics. And I said, you do have what we call the y-axis, you do have what we call the x-axis. Then you must always ask yourself a question. Do I have in mathematics anything called the y-axis? Do I have anything called the y-axis? The answer is yes. Do I have anything called the y-1-axis? The answer is no. It means that y-1 must be a number. Do I have anything called m axis the answer is no it means that must be a number do i have anything called the x axis the answer is yes do i have anything anything called the x1 axis the answer is no which means you must find this as a number that as a number and that as a number y1 m and x1 must be a number then let me start with the gradient now how do you find the gradient of a tangent with only one point take note you are only given one point 
you are only given one point. This point. If you are only given one point, then the equation of a gradient says, sorry, the equation of a line, sorry, the gradient of a line says it must be m is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. But you only have one point. Therefore, it means you must find another way of finding that gradient. And now, because you know that theorem, you know that if you can draw a line from the center to the point of contact, then that line will be called a radius. Then you calculate the gradient of a radius. Then the gradient of a radius, you know you've got two points. You can say x1, y1, x2, and y2. Okay. And then when you do that, you can simply substitute now and say I've got y2 is negative 3. Minus y1 is positive 2. Divided by x, x2. Oh, okay, I, I, did, I did the opposite. As you can see, it doesn't matter. You can still have it as x1, y1 there, as well as x2, y2. There is no rule that which one must be x1, which one must be x2. So I'm, I'm seeing that I started here. So it doesn't matter. So you can keep that as long as you are able to start with one point and end with the other point. I'm starting with this one and ending with that one. So which means it's negative 3 from y2 minus 2 divided by, and x2 is 4 minus, and x1 will be, so the answer will be negative 3, negative uh, 2 will be negative 5. Divided by 4 minus 1 will be 3. And the answer is negative 5 over 3. Now remember, as I said earlier, some, some may have chosen to say this is x1 and that is y1. That is x2 and that is y2 you will still have the same answer because now what you will say you will say now the gradient um, the gradient of r you will say is equal to y2 you will say it is 2 minus y1 it will be 3 so it's 2 minus minus 3 which is going to be oh okay i can see you, you let me write here m of r will be y2 in this case will be 2 Minus y1 will be th negative 3. So it will be negative, negative 3, which is positive 3. Then x2 will be 1. And then x1 will be 4. So it will be 1, negative 4. And the answer will still be 2 plus 3. It will be 5 divided by 1 minus 4 will be negative uh, 3. Which means this thing is still the same as negative 5 over 3. Because remember, plus the time the minus is always a minus. So you get the same answer anyway. Then the moment you find the gradient of the radius, the moment you find the gradient of the radius, then you say, what is the gradient of the tangent? Remember, gradient of the radius multiplied by gradient of the tangent must always give negative 1, which means uh, that the gradient of a tangent we will just say what was the sign it was negative there the sign was negative there this one will be positive you don't have to write it the gradient was 5 divided by 3 this one will simply be 3 divided by 5 in other words you take the denominator and make it the numerator and the numerator make it the denominator so you now know the gradient of a tangent so you know the gradient of a tangent is equal to 5 uh, sorry 3 divide by 5. And you know the point on the circumference the point on the circumference is r with coordinates 4 and negative 3. Therefore, it means that you do have it as x1 and y1 and you have the gradient, let me re-emphasize, 3 divided by 5 so that it is more clearer. Then you come back to this formula now. You come back to that formula and do the substitution, and then you will be you will be having y minus, and what is y one? Y one will be negative three, and it means it's y minus minus three, 
which becomes plus 3, is equal to m for gradient. And what is your gradient? It's 3 divided by 5 into x minus. And what is your x1? Your x1 is 4. And then once you do substitution, the rest is algebra. It means you just have now to remove the brackets, multiply out, add the light terms and all that. I always prefer to deal with the denominator in a special way. I always prefer to multiply everything by the denominator or the lowest common denominator. In this case, the denominator is 5. So my way of doing will be to say, let me just multiply the left hand side and the right hand side by the denominator. So it means what I will do now, I will just say left, right hand side, I must multiply it by 5. Left hand side, I must multiply it by 5. Then the moment I do that, then that 5, which is the denominator, will cancel that 5. And then I will just remove the brackets and say I've got 5y, 5 times y is 5y, plus uh, 5 times 3 is 15 is equal to, then I'm only left with the numerator. I'm avoiding to work with fractions. That's one way of avoiding working with fractions. You just, from scratch, where you see a fraction, and it's an equation, you just multiply both sides by the denominator. If there are more than one denominator, then you find the lowest common denominator. The easiest way of finding the lowest common denominator, though it may not necessarily be the lowest, is just to multiply the denominators and you get it. That's what you learn in intermediate phase grade 4 or even grade 5 fractions. So, you multiply both sides by 5, so it's 5 times 5 times y is 5y, five, 5 times 3 is 15. Then you come to the right hand side, 3 times x is 3x, and 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. And then you just make y the subject of the formula. So it means the first thing that you'll do, you'll take the constant to the right hand side. That is 15 to the right hand side. So you'll be having 3x, right? Then you take 15 over to the right hand side, it becomes negative. So the answer will be negative 12, negative 15, which will be negative 27. Then the left hand side, you are left with 5y. You are left with 5y. Then the rest now is just to divide everything by 5. Just divide everything by 5. Divide everything by 5. And then your answer there, because now 5 will cancel 5, your answer will be y is equal to 3 over 5 multiplied by, oh sorry, 3 over 5x and then minus 27 divided by 5. You can simplify it. So in short, the equation of that tangent is y is equal to 3 over 5x, 3 over 5x minus 27 divided by 5. That is the equation. Another one could have just removed the brackets here. You, you could have just removed the brackets here. Let me just uh, 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 take this one and say, if for argument's sake you had it as 5y, uh, 5 If you had it as 5y What was the next one? Plus, was it plus 3x? Okay, let me just go back there Okay, let me just retrieve what, I, what, I, what I've just done uh, there Okay. Okay. Let, let's just let's just say it was five y. I can't recall now, but it was five y. Uh, okay. Is equal to. You know what? Let me let me just go back. I don't know now what happened. Okay. Let's ju let's just uh, okay. Let's just say for argument's sake. Okay, let me just go back to the substitution part. It doesn't matter so that you can also understand. Let's say you were you were having that point. The gradient of a tangent was was it three over five or five over three? 
3 over 5, right? And you, you had a point there which was having coordinates 4 and negative 3. I just wanted to, you to see another way of removing the brackets because there's not only one way. Then you have y minus y1 is equal to m into x minus x1. So this is x1 and y1. Then you substitute y is y minus y1 is negative 3. So it's minus minus 3, which is plus 3, is equal to the gradient is 3 over 5 into x minus and x1 is 4. Yes, this is the step I wanted. When you are in this step, remember, I said another way of doing it was to multiply both sides by 5. Multiply by 5, that side multiply by 5. But other learners will prefer to just remove the bracket and say I've got y plus 3 is equal to 3 over 5 times x is 3 over 5x. And 3 over 5 times minus 4. Remember, you multiply the numerators only and the denominators only. Remember, 4 is 4 over 1 as a fraction. So it's three, it means it's 3 times 4, which is 12, over 5 times 1, which is 5. Then you take that 3 over to that side, so you'll be having y is equal to 3 over 5x minus 12 over 5, and then minus 3. Then now, you have to deal with this part. Okay. Or maybe let me include even that one. You have to deal with that part. Right? Then how do you deal with that part? You find what is called the lowest common denominator once again. So you'll be having y is equal to 3 over 5x. Right? And then what you must do, you must find what is called the lowest common denominator. I prefer to put uh, uh, the lowest common denominator and say 5 times 1. 5 times 1 is going to be 5. Right? And then you ask yourself, Five, remember, okay, let's, let's just say plus, plus doesn't change anything, and then I'm going to put that one in brackets. Then you say, how many times does five go to five? One. And then one times negative 12 is negative uh, 12. How many times does one go to five? Five times. Five times three, that is negative three, it becomes negative 15. Then ultimately, you can add all those things that are there. Therefore, you'll end up having, you'll end up having y is equal to 3 over 5x, and then minus 12 minus 15 is minus 27 over 5, and plus times a minus is a minus, so it's 27 over 5. The point I'm trying to make here is that there may be different ways of moving from one step to the other. You are not confined only to one, uh, uh, one method. Right. Now, I want us now to move uh, to examples now from previous year's question papers. I just wanted to emphasize that one. Let's just move and do examples from previous question papers now. Uh, we'll probably be able to take two of them. This one, I've taken this example from 2014 Eastern Cape Mathematics Trial Paper 2, question 4. This is how it was. Which, by the way, you can always get it even from the website of the Department of Education, Eastern Cape Department of Education website, right? You can always get the question papers there. So if you don't have the question paper, just quickly draw that cycle. And please take note of that. I said on, that was on Tuesday, our first lesson, I said, remember, in Euclidean geometry, in analytical geometry, we have three things that are very important. We've got a statement, we've got a diagram, and then we've got questions. So it's a statement followed by a diagram followed by questions, which means it is very important to read the statement looking at the diagram. And it is going to assist you to answer questions looking back at the diagram. So it's like the statement you want to confirm if what is written here in the statement is really there in the diagram. And you are always free to scribble on your diagram. So 
for instance, let's read the length of the radius of the circle with equation. That equation is 5. So which means the radius is 5. So you can estimate the center somewhere there and say my radius is 5 units. That's what you can do. My radius is 5 units so that you can see. Now, if you read that, you always ask yourself a question. Do I have anything called the x-axis in mathematics? Yes. You're looking at the variables, the unknowns. Do I have anything called the x-axis? Yes. Do I have anything called y-axis? Yes. Do I have anything called y-axis? Yes. Do I have a-axis? I've never heard of that. There is the problem. It means you must find that as a number. And then you go to your questions. Question one. Show by means of calculations that A is equal to 20. That's the first question. Then you go back to the diagram and the statement and say, what is it that is given? I'm given this equation. So mine is just to copy down this equation and also write the fact that the radius of that circle is 5. I was told the radius is 5 because the statement reads, the length of the radius of a circle with equation, that equation, is 5 units. What is it that is 5 units? It is the radius. You are told that the radius is 5 units. Then you copy down that equation. I hope I will be able to remember uh, that uh, we are answering 4.1 now. That it is x squared, I think it was minus 2x plus y squared. Uh, I'm not sure it's plus or minus 4y. And then is equal to a. Then we just double check if it is is positive for y. So which means it's plus for y. So there is the equation. Now they say to you show that a is equal to twenty. Now in your completing the square that we did yesterday, they have done you a favor once by already taking this to the right hand side. So you already have a on the right hand side. So remember how to complete the square. It means you must be able to change this and write it in this form x minus a all squared plus y minus b all squared is equal to r squared. And yesterday we talked about it and we said one of the famous ways of doing that is to complete the square. Is to complete the square. How do you complete the square? Remember, we said you group x's together, they are already grouped. You group y's together, they are already grouped. And then you take the constant. A constant is a term without x or y next to it. Once you see anything without x or y next to it, in this case, we call that a constant. Then it means you take it to the right hand side. It's already done. So step one, already done for you. Step two, do it one by one. Focus on the axis and take the coefficient of x, negative two. Multiply it by half multiply it by half, then square it. This is what you basically do. Coefficient of x multiplied by half, you square it. Half of negative 2 is negative 1. Squared is 1. So it means you've got 1 there. Then it means now you will be having x squared minus 2x, and then you add 1. Then you go to y, and you say, I must take the coefficient of y, 4. Multiply it by half, multiply it by half. Then square it, you square it. Then half of 4 is 2 and 2 squared is 4. It means I'm going to add 4. So it means I'm having plus y squared plus 4y plus what I've just calculated, which is 4. It must be equal to a, which was already there. But remember now, this is mathematics. Whatever you do on the left, you must also do it on the right hand side. So I've added, I've added 1. I've added 4 on the left hand side. So I must do likewise on the right hand side. I must add 1. I must add 4. Then the next step now is to find the factors. And how do we find the factors? Remember what we said about the factors. What we said about the factors. Ah. Uh, Right, uh, unfortunately, I'm sure this thing, this thing, uh, okay. 
it doesn't matter, let's start over. So I'm saying the equation is x squared minus 2x plus y squared plus 4y is equal to a. Then I'm saying, what, what is it that is happening there? Step one, remember, is to group x's together, they are already grouped in. Group y is together, they are already grouped in. Take constant, that is the term without x or y next to it, to the right. That is already done. Done. Second one, take the coefficient of x, multiply it by half. Coefficient of x is negative 2, multiply it by half, then you square it. Half of negative 2 is 1, negative 1. Squared is 1. So it means now we are going to have x squared negative 2x, then plus 1 plus then take the coefficient of y 4 multiply it by half half then squared then half of 4 is 2 2 squared is 4 i'm moving a bit faster because i'm repeating this so it's y squared now plus 4y plus 4 is equal to a which was already there right now what happens now is you have added 1 Okay You have added 1 Right You have added 1 You have added 4 On the left hand side This is mathematics, whatever you do on the right On the left, you must also do it on the right So which means you will be having plus 1 plus 4 then the next step that you must do is to obviously find factors. How do we find factors? Remember what we said yesterday. We said to just open brackets and plus open brackets, you square that and you say is equal to. How do you find factors therefore? You find factors by finding the square root of the first term, which is x. Sine of the middle term, which is negative square root of the third term which is one and you square it you are done you don't have to think then coming to y you do likewise square root of the first term y sine of the middle term plus square root of the third term two and then you are done then the right hand side is just a plus five so you've got this thing in that format x minus a all squared plus y minus b all squared is equal to r squared. Take note, whatever that is in the right hand side is r squared. Remember, the question was saying show that a is equal to 20. What is it that you were given? What you were given was that the radius of this circle is 5. So you must now remember that. Okay? So, which means if r is equal to 5, what is r squared? r squared, it means you have squared with left hand side. You must do likewise on the right hand side. So, from here to there, you have just squared the left hand side. So, also square the right hand side. It means it's going to be 5 squared. And then remember that this which is on the right hand side is always r squared according to that format remember the right hand side is always r squared it means now in place of r squared i can simply write a plus five a plus five all squared will be equal to five times five it is twenty twenty five Right, and then from here, obviously, you can move from here by multiplying out, removing the brackets, and doing all that. But the rest of that now will definitely be your algebra, and you will be able to get uh, your, 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 your A there. Right now, let me move. Oh, before that, the second question there was write down the coordinates. What does it say? Write down the coordinates of the center M. Now the question is, how do you write down the coordinates of the center M? 
and the answer is very simple. The answer is very simple. It is simple. Remember that the sender is having coordinates A and B, which means we change this sign and change that sign, which means the coordinates of the sender M will be, you just go for X and change that sign and make it 1, and change this sign and make it negative. So when you have completed the square, you are simply able to write down the, equation, sorry, the coordinates of the sender. Right. Then moving on to the next one. Still the same question is continuing. Now we have told that A is having coordinates X and Y with Y greater than zero is one of the points of intersections points of intersection of the circle and the straight line x is equal to 4. Now the question is determine the values of x and y. Determine the values of x and y. Right? Values of x and y. The question is how do we do that? Let's go back a bit and, and, and try and recall what is our equation. Right? Our equation is now, x minus 1 plus all squared plus y plus 2 all squared is equal to, and then the value of a, you were told that it is equal to 20. So it means that you can either use that one or the other one. Maybe for the sake of this lesson and the emphasis on the fact that generally in mathematics and even some subjects like physical sciences and accounting where data and mathematical literacy, where data and equations are given, what you need to do, you need to try as much as you can to use the original information, what was given before. So maybe we need to go back and check what was given. And of which what was given was this equation. So it will be very important to use this equation. Remember now A is equal to 20. So in place of A, there is 20. So it means the equation, uh, okay, it means the equation, yeah, that's where we are. It means the equation is x squared minus 2x, I hope I'm remembering it well, y squared plus 4y is equal to, it was equal to A, but now we are told that A is equal to 20. That's what we do. Then the second thing they tell you is that x is equal to 4. So this now is like a simultaneous equation, but a simple simultaneous equation because you now know that x is equal to 4. So which means yours now is just to substitute. Whenever you see x, you put 4. So where there is x, where there is x, you just put 4. So which means that this is going to be 4 squared minus 2 times 4 plus y squared plus 4y is equal to 20. Then remember, these are just numbers. These are just numbers. So it means you must take them. To, you, must, you must add the like terms. But remember now, if you look at this thing closely, you'll have y squared plus 4y, which looks like this thing, ay squared plus by plus c is equal to zero. This now is obviously a quadratic equation. So it's leading you to a quadratic equation, which is y squared plus 4y. And then, you know, you are sure about that one. Then what is 4 squared? 4 squared is 16. And 2 times 4 is 8. So 16, 16 minus 8 is 8. Then you take 20 to the other side. So you've got uh, 16 minus 8, which is going to be, let me write it, which is going to be 8. Then you take 20 to the other side. So it's negative 20 is equal to 0. Because remember, in quadratic equations, what you strive to do, you strive to make sure that your right hand side is equal to 0 first. And therefore, you'll be having y squared plus 4y. And then, 8, these, are, these two are like terms. Those two are like terms. 8, negative 20, those are like terms. So 8 minus 2. If you are not sure, you are free to use a calculator uh, because I know a lot of you struggle to even add simple numbers. 
So you can use a calculator, 8 minus 20 will give you a negative 12, because remember we take the sign of the bigger number, then the answer will be zero there on the right hand side. Then from here, you can either factorize or use the quadratic formula. Now remember that this is algebra now, so the rest is algebra, so maybe let me quickly do, let me quickly do it is equal to zero. So we'll be having y and y, and you'll be having, now factors of 12, when you subtract you get 4. Factors of 12, factors of 12 is 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4. So you want the ones which when you subtract, you want the factors of 12, which when you subtract, this is the key sign, which when you subtract you are going to get 4. When you subtract, you are going to get 4. So which ones are you going to choose? You can't choose 1 and 12 because 12 minus 1 is 11. Now 2 and 6, 6 minus 2 is 4. So it means you choose those ones, 2 and 6. Then the sign of the middle term, you always put to the next to the bigger factor. So which means that that plus, you will have to put it here. Then you are having a plus, you want to get a minus. What must we have? You must definitely have a minus. And therefore, your solutions will be y is equal to 2 or y is equal to negative 6. Now, let's go back to the question again. A x y with y is greater than 0 is one of the points of intersection of the circle and the straight line x is equal to 4. Determine the values of x and y. Now, that is very key. y is greater than 0. It means we must choose the one with y greater than zero. So you've got two values of y that you calculated. But now, that is restricting you now to one value. Now, which one are you going to choose? The one which is greater than zero. It is the one which is positive. It means the value that we are going to choose is that of, is that of uh, two, which is two. So it means we are going to say, therefore, our y is equal to 2. Now, remember that your x, you know, it was already equal to 4. Then the next question says, determine the equation of a tangent to the circle at point A. Remember now, point A is having coordinates. Point A, let me write them somewhere where they will be clear. Point A is having now coordinates. x is 4 and y is 2. x is 4 and y is 2. So you've got that point. So if a question says determine the equation of a tangent to the circle at point A. Now, it means you will need it means you will need to to, 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 to know your circle. Uh, it means you need to know your circle. I'll just draw it quickly. I hope I have a blank slide that follows. Then there is a point somewhere which is the center of a circle, right? Then there is a point somewhere which is 4 and 2. So you must know what is the center. And the center you had calculated, I think the previous question was asking about the center. The center was calculated and the center was calculated to be 1 and negative 2. Which means you've got two points now. Which means you've got... Um, right. Which means you've got uh, two points now. Which means you've got the center. I will just write here for now. Uh, and then I'll, 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 I'll come back to this one. You've got the center, which was coordinate M. I think it was 1 and negative 2. This is the center. Please take note of this. This is the center. And then you've got a point, point A, and the coordinates is 4 and 2. Now, if you were to draw a, any circle, then you would have a center, which is a 1, 1, and negative 2. And then you would have a point on the circle, which is a, 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 a 4 and Right? Which means basically your Cartesian plane, I think it looks like that one. Right? Because that one is 1 and negative 2 and that one. But it's not important to draw it. I'm just drawing it so that you can have an idea. 
Then it means there is a radius there. Radius. Then it means that tangent is something like that one. So the point is here, you must calculate the gradient of a radius. And a radius is from the center to any point on the circumference. So when you calculate the gradient of the radius, it will be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And then what is x? You can say this is, you can say, it's, it's, you can choose and say this is x1 and y1, this is x2 and y2. You can choose any, and then you just substitute what is y2? y2 is 2 minus, what is y1? y1 is negative 2, so it's minus, minus 2, right? Which is going to be plus 2, all divided by, and then x2 is 4, and then x1 is 1. And the answer is 2 plus 2, 4 divided by 4 minus 1, is 3. Now, this is the gradient of a radius. So the gradient of a radius is 4 over 3. What will be the gradient of a tangent? The gradient of a tangent. Now, this one was positive, this one will be negative. This one was 4 over 3, this one will be negative 3 over 4. And then you simply use y minus y1 is equal to m into x minus x1. So you just substitute. Now remember, when you choose your x1 and y1, okay, you must choose the, from, the po from that one, the point of contact. So this will be x1 and y1. So therefore, you will be having y minus y1 is 2. Is equal to m, you have just calculated it to be uh, negative. Well, sorry, to be negative, this one. It will be, it will be negative 3 over 4 into x minus and your x1 will be 4 then the rest is algebra the rest is algebra now remember that i said you can just multiply everything by 4 if you choose that that approach of multiplying everything by 4 so you'll be having 4y you must get used to this now just multiply you don't have to show everything 4 times y is 4y 4 times minus 2 is minus 8 is equal to then this 4 is gone so 3 times x is 3x minus 3 times 4 is 12 and then you can just make y the subject of the formula so we'll be having 4y is equal to 3x and then you take this 8 over to the other side it becomes positive i believe it will be negative 4 because it will be negative 12 plus 8 you can press it in your calculator negative 12 plus 8 and then you'll get your answer as negative 4 then you can divide everything by 4 everything by 4 everything by 4 so the equation will end up being y is equal to 3 over 4 x minus 1 that will now be the equation of a tangent so this now as you can see is the application of what it is the application of what we learned before right now, the, the next question, or the next pair of questions, it is where we were. I, I was just giving you a chance to write down whatever I wrote there. The next questions are those ones. I think now I will just guide you on, the, on those ones. Determine whether, uh, let's just uh, go to them straight. Determine whether the point T, so this is 4.5, you've got the point T, minus 1 and minus 2. Determine whether this point lies inside or outside the circle. What is it that you will need here? You will need a second point, which is the center. What was your center? Your center was M with coordinates 1 and negative 2. I want to believe so. It was negative 1 and negative 2. Then what you need to do, you need to calculate this length, right? I will, I, will, I will just illustrate here briefly and say, if the point lies outside, it means now you are having that and that. So it means now the length or the distance between the sender and that point T. 
will be greater than the distance between the center and the circumference. If it's outside, so outside will mean the length of the radius of the existing circle is less than the distance between center and that point. Let me repeat. If it is outside, the length of the radius will be smaller than the distance between the center and that point. But if it is inside, if it is inside, it will be this story. It will be this story. You will be having a point there. It means you will be having a line there. Which means now this line, the length of this line, if T is somewhere inside, it means now when you compare this length of MT and this length of the radius, the length of the radius, the radius will be greater than that distance. I hope you understand that C and point. So it simply means, therefore, that you must calculate the distance between these two points. Right. What are those two points? It's point T, minus 1, minus 2, and point M, which is, uh, I th no, no, yeah, 1 and minus 2. I think that was the case. Then you must calculate that distance. Remember TM, I'm just going to move quickly because... Uh, we did this before. You can say x1, y1, x2, y2. So it will be uh, x2 minus x1 all squared plus y2 minus y1 all squared. That's how you calculate the distance. So you substitute. So it's going to be x2 will be 1 minus x1 minus minus 1 is plus 1 all squared. Plus y2 will be negative 2. Negative 2, negative 2 will be minus minus, which will be plus 2, all squared. And then if you look at that now, 1 plus 1 is 2, all squared, square root of 2. So you've got square root of 2. Minus 2 plus 2, that's 0. Squared, that's 0. And the answer will be square root of 2. Now the question is, what was the length of the radius? Now remember, the radius, the length of the radius was given as 5. The length of the radius was given as 5. In this case now, you can see that 5 is greater than square root of 2. What does it mean now? It simply means that that point now lies inside. Because the distance between the center and that point is less than the distance between the center and the circumference. So which means... That point lies inside. Point lies inside. So that is one of the things I wanted to emphasize. Then the last thing that I want to emphasize, especially with analytical geometry, is the issue of translation. Translation. Or let me just say, uh, not necessarily translation. Uh, uh, let me just say transformation. Because there can be translation or reflection. If the circle is translated three units to the left and one unit up, determining the equation of the new circle. I will just write it here because I want this to be the last one because I believe uh, it's already uh, around five past twelve or something. So I must finish up. So what is this equation of what is the equation of that circle in? This form x minus a all squared plus y minus b all squared is equal to r squared. What is that equation? Now, you will recall that we calculated that. And we calculated it to be... Uh, we calculated it... I hope it's still there. We calculated it... Okay, it doesn't matter because I, I now don't see it. But remember, we calculated it. And when we calculated it, we calculated it with square... We, we were uh, doing... Uh, 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 what is that? Um, uh, that? That thing of where we were squaring, you know, taking half of that, completing the square. That's the term I was looking for. We completed the square, if you remember. And the fact that the sender 
is negative 1 and 2 simply means that that equation was x, I will change that sign, minus 1, all squared plus y, I will change that sign, plus 2 is equal to, but because we're told that the radius was uh, 5, I think we're told that the radius is 5, we're told that the radius is 5, so which means that it's 25 actually, should be, if the radius is 5, it means r squared is 25, so that should be the equation. But the most important thing here is that they say this thing is translated three units to the left and one unit up. When you translate something to the left, you add. When you translate something to the right, you subtract in this type of equation. So which means now you will be having a situation where, uh, I hope I still have a space, okay, what I will do, I will write it here because I just need a space. We're having x minus 1 all squared plus y plus 2 all squared is equal to 25. Now they say translate that thing 3 units. It's translated 3 units to the left, 3 units to the left. It means that I am saying when you are translating it to the left, you add to the right, you subtract up, you subtract down, you add. Why do we do that? Remember that this thing is simply x. Uh, this thing is simple. x minus 1 is equal to 0. So x is equal to 1. Then you need to add if you are translating up. Or oh, sorry, if you are translating to the right. And then take it back to the left hand side. So the easiest way is to know that if you translate this thing 3 units to the left, then you must add. If you translate it to the right, then you must subtract. So in other words, you do the opposite. So what it means is that now it will be x minus 1, and then you translate it to the uh, left, it means you add all squared. Plus, then they say you translate it further to the, let me just double check that. They say you translate it one unit up one unit up, it means you subtract. So up, subtract, down, add. Left, subtract, right, add. So which, right, subtract, left, add, yeah. Translating it three units to the left, you add. Translating it one unit up, you subtract. It means that you have to subtract that one. Uh, I should have used uh, this one again. Subtract that one all squared, and the answer will be 25. And therefore, your answer will be x minus 1 plus 3 will be plus 2 all squared plus y. 2 minus 1 will be 1 all squared, and the answer will be 25. Right. So that will be the new equation after translation has taken place. Uh, at this point in time, I will just summarize in one minute and say, in analytical geometry, you need to understand those 10 things. Distance between two points, midpoint of a line segment, gradient of a line, angle of inclination, equation of a line, parallel lines, what about the gradient, perpendicular lines, what about the gradient, collinear points, what about the gradient, and then equation of a circle, as well as equation of a Furthermore, you need to know properties of triangles and properties of uh, uh, quadrilaterals. Then, in addition to that, you just have to understand your algebra because your algebra is very important. That means you can able to remove the brackets, work with fractions, multiply out, factorize, and all those things. Now, let me take this opportunity and say thank you very much for watching and, uh, and listening. At this point in time, we are going to end here. Because I can see my colleague uh, is more than ready to start his mathematical literacy. As a, as, a, as, a, as, a just, as a way of challenging yourself, just go to all the question papers, uh, previous year's question papers, and look for question 4 from 2014. Just look for question 4. You will see questions involving circles, mostly in question 4 of the question papers. Remember, all what you have to do is just to practice mathematics, otherwise it is going to be easy for you to do that. <laughs>
Now remember, again, lastly, this is the, the term two topic, so which means that we are continuing with what we are supposed to be doing, which means when the school finally is open, uh, we're not sure yet, you will be able to be ahead and be able to master your analytical That is 40 marks.